In this video, we'll discuss installing the ESCs on your brand new racing drone. As a reminder, this video accompanies our text guide on propwash.com that you can use to follow the process step by step with pictures. Now that we have our frame assembled, we can start connecting all the pieces together. Our first major installation will be connecting our speed controllers, or ESCs, to the motor and to the PDB. The ESCs receive data from the flight controller and send commands to the motors to control the speed at which they turn, just as the name implies. We power them by hooking them up to the PDB, which is connected to our battery, which supplies power to all the components on our quad. We have a whole article dedicated to quadcopter anatomy on PropWashed that can help you understand the workings between each of the components. Now, if you already knew the basic quadcopter anatomy and did a test fit of all the components like we recommended earlier, you may have noticed that there's a lot of extra wire coming from both the motors and the ESCs. To make the cleanest build possible, we're gonna desolder the wires on the ESC that would connect to the motor, measure and trim the wires from the motor that connect to the ESC, and then solder those trimmed wires to the ESC. This is gonna remove the excess wire and give us a much more secure, clean, and lighter build in the end. Realistically, most of this process is for aesthetic reasons. You can just hook the motors to the ESC motor wires and solder the ESC power leads to the PDB for the same effect if you really want to. However, this will increase the weight of your quad and leave you with a messy tangle of wires. The main goal of this video is to show you the process for hooking up the ESCs while also maintaining a clean and lightweight build. So to start this process, we need to remove the plastic heat shrink that surrounds each ESC. Now obviously, you need to be very careful here and not accidentally cut into the circuit board. We recommend applying little pressure and using a tool such as a hobby knife to cut the heat shrink. Similar to the tip we gave in our LaForge installation video, we love using a heated hobby knife to cut through all types of plastic easily. If you aren't confident in your cutting abilities, one tip that we've seen is to cut along the side of the ESC where you're less likely to damage components on the board. Also, if after cutting the shrink wrap is still not separating cleanly, we like using pliers to pull apart any excess plastic. All right, now that we have the ESCs opened up, let's talk a little bit about the different wires. If you're using BL Heli ESCs as we recommended, you'll notice different wires on each side of the board. The side with three black wires are your motor wires. These wires, or in our case, the pads that the wires sit on, will connect to your motor. On the other side of the ESC are four wires. These are the power wires that connect to your PDB and the signal wires that connect to your flight controller. For the most part, any ESC you get should follow this layout, but you might find the power wires on the opposite side of the board. Same process, just a slightly different layout. Let's start with the motor wires. To make the connection shorter, we're gonna desolder the three wires from each ESC. Now desoldering is easy. Simply take your heated soldering iron, press it gently on the solder holding the wire, and pull the wire off. Be careful though, as the wire can heat up quickly. We like using a pair of pliers to pull away the wire when the solder has been heated. If you don't have any experience soldering, we have a tutorial video on our channel, as well as a written guide that includes practice exercises that can help with this process. Try to do these steps quickly. In general, you don't want to keep the soldering iron on any circuit board for an extended period of time. Repeat this process until all the motor wires have been removed from each ESC. Next, we want to connect the motor wires to the ESCs. As I said before, we want to make the build as clean as possible, and we obviously don't need all the extra wire that comes out of each motor. What we want to do is place our ESC where we want to mount it, measure out the amount of motor wire it will take to reach the pads on the ESC, and clip the wires at that point. This will make for a very simple connection with minimal excess wire sticking off the frame. Now in terms of where exactly to mount the ESCs, for beginners we recommend about halfway down the arm. This makes for the simplest installation that also allows you easy access to the components for repairs, you know, if they're needed. However, realistically, this will depend on a few things, such as the length of the wires coming out of the motors, the size of the arms of your frame, etc. Use your best judgment here, but in general, we want to mount the ESC where we have a direct connection to the motors, obviously, and enough wire on the opposite side of the ESC to connect to the flight controller and the PDB. This shouldn't be much of an issue with most mini quads, but obviously measure everything out before cutting. So after you figure it out where to place your ESCs, measure the motor wire necessary to reach that spot, and use your wire cutters to cut each of the wires so that the ends reach the motor pads on the ESC. Repeat this process on all the motor wires. We like using a ruler to quickly clip all the wires to the same size without having to place an ESC each time. Now this doesn't have to be a super exact process, we're only going for aesthetics here and trying to lessen the clutter and weight on the quad. If you measure and get each one close enough, it's going to look great in the end. They don't all have to be exactly the same size. Once you have everything sized correctly and clipped, strip a small bit of insulation off the tips of the wires. Strip as small an amount as you possibly can. 
More exposed wire means more wire that you need to protect from electrical shorts. One to two millimeters will be more than enough for this process. We like using the tips of our fingers for this rather than tools, as using a wire stripper or clippers can be cumbersome at this point. Next, tin each of the wire tips. Heat the exposed wire with your soldering iron and apply solder until the wire is completely coated. In general, any wire to pad connection works much better if you pre-tin the wire. Once everything is tinned and ready to go, you can solder each of the motor wires to each of the pads on the ESC. The order of the wires doesn't matter here, just make sure each wire from the motor gets soldered to an individual pad on the ESC. Press the tinned wire on the pad using the soldering iron, and apply pressure until the wire sinks into the pad and forms a solid connection. Use helping hands or other tools as needed to keep everything in place. You may need a bit more solder to complete the connection, but in general if you tinned the wires correctly, they should easily sink into the leftover solder that remained on the pad from the previous wires. Repeat this process until you have all the motors and ESCs hooked up. Before we move on to connecting the wires on the other side of the ESCs to the PDB, we want to be able to cover them back up. There are a few ways you can do this. We recommend using heat shrink as it's cheap and easy to remove if you need to make repairs later on. Cut a piece of heat shrink to size and then slip it over the wires and towards the motor. You can cut one heat shrink section to length and then use that piece as a template for the other three. Make sure you size it so it covers the board and any exposed wire. Eventually we'll align it directly on the ESC and apply heat to shrink it in place, but not yet. It doesn't make a ton of sense to secure it to the ESC at this point, just in case we need to troubleshoot the ESC later when finalizing the build. However, since we're about to solder the other wires to the PDB, we just want to put the heat shrink in place now before we close the connection. If you don't have heat shrink handy, you could also use electrical tape to cover the ESCs. Be careful here though. You want to wrap the ESC completely before securing it to the frame. Don't use electrical tape to wrap the naked ESC to the carbon fiber. Remember how we mentioned carbon fiber being conductive in the last video? Same idea here. We want to cover the ESC and any wire connections completely before we secure the ESC to the frame. Now that our motors and ESCs are connected, we can move on to connecting our ESCs to the PDB. Before doing so though, we need to prepare our PDB. First, figure out all the connections on your PDB and note what each pad is used for. Most PDBs will have the positive and negative pads labeled, but many won't label what components each pad is used for on the board. To figure this all out, consult the manual that came with your PDB or look up the product model online. You can also look at our PDB buyer's guide on PropWashed, which goes into more detail on the different components on most PDBs and what they're used for. After we know where we're going to wire all the components on our PDB, it's time to figure out how we're going to position it on our frame. Now at this point, if you watched the last video, you might be saying, hey, wait a second, we put standoffs on the center of the frame to hold the PDB, so it should just go there, right? And you're right, but we want to orient the PDB on those standoffs correctly. For example, if you want to have the battery connector come out the back of the frame, then you'll want to position the battery pads on the PDB facing the rear of the quad. This will allow us to use less wire and make the wiring process more efficient and easier to troubleshoot down the road. Next, we're going to take the positive and negative power leads from our ESC and route them to the proper locations on the PDB. We recommend running the wires from the arm into the center of the quad and securing the wires to the PDB from the front or rear of the frame. We don't want to bring wires in from the sides as this leaves them vulnerable to getting chopped up by props or torn off by twigs or branches when crashing. Once you've figured out how you're going to route the ESC wires to the PDB, hold down the ESC where you want to secure it, Cut the wires so that they reach their respective pads, strip a small amount of the covering away with your fingers, and tin the wires. This is basically the same process we completed earlier when we sized, trimmed, and tinned the motor wires, so it should feel very familiar. Next, it's time to tin the pads on the PDB with solder. Similar to how we tinned the ESC pads earlier, we're going to carefully tin each of the pads with a bit of solder so that we can connect the wires to the board. To be efficient with our time here, we recommend tinning all the pads you're going to be using for the build. That means not just the ESC pads, but also the battery pads, 5 volt pad used for the flight controller, and the dedicated pads for the camera and video transmitters if you're going to be flying FPV. This will save you time and allow you to tin the pads without any wires blocking your way later in the build. Be careful when tinning the pads by making sure that no solder gets between the gaps of each connection. You want a clean blob of solder on each pad with no overlap. If you accidentally get a bit of solder between the pads, use your soldering iron to heat the excess solder and push it to one of the pads. And finally, we'll take our tin DSC power wires and solder them to their respective tin pads on the PDB.
Again, this should feel familiar as it's basically repeating the same process we completed earlier in securing the tinned motor wires to the tinned ESC pads. The only exception here is to be careful that you secure the positive red wire from the ESC to the positive pad on the PDB and similarly the negative black wire to the negative pad on the PDB. Unlike the motor wires, the ordering of the wires to the PDB is extremely important. Messing up the polarity here can cause a short and fry your electronics. Repeat this process for all your ESCs. Once you have everything secured, do a quick double check to make sure your positive and negative wires are secured to the correct pads on your PDB. To finish off our PDB for this video, we want to secure the wires that will eventually hook up to our battery. Using two large silicon wires, at least 18 gauge, strip some of the silicon covering off, tin the wire, and secure to the correct pad. Remember, red to positive, black to negative. Be careful here though, as these larger wires will require much more solder to tin and take up more space on the PDB. We aren't going to attach the XT60 connector that will eventually go on the other side of these wires, as we'll wait until the end of the build when cleaning everything up to make sure we size it out correctly. And with that, our motors are connected to our ESCs, and our ESCs are connected to the PDB. One optional step that we recommend is shortening the signal wires from the ESC. You could zip tie the excess wire if you don't want to cut anything here, but it's a pretty easy process. Again, this is an optional step, and if this is your first build, you may want to just wait until you have the flight controller in place and are able to size the wires perfectly and test the final connection. The easiest way to shorten these is to desolder the signal wires from the ESC, clip the excess wire off, strip, tin, and solder the wire back onto the ESC. This is basically the same process that we've been repeating throughout this video. In terms of sizing the wire, cut the wire length to reach from the ESC toward the end of the signal wire will connect onto the flight controller. Be sure to make a note about which color wire goes on which pad of the ESC, or you can keep one of the ESCs available as a reference before desoldering and soldering everything back together. Next up, we'll cover the flight controller and wiring together all the electronics. You can check out the links to the articles and videos we referenced using the on-screen cards or in the video description. Similarly, you can click on the link to the next video on screen, or you can use the link in the description. We'll see you there.